appreciate the good song. I, while you're turning, I'm going to sing one little verse of a song, a little song here. Uh, but uh, I want you to uh, turn to, be turning to the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Book of Hebrews chapter number 7 and verses 19 through 25. The book of Hebrews chapter number 7. All right. Uh, Ashley and I have not practiced this song, but you'll understand why I'm going to do it here in a few minutes. So I'm going to give her about two seconds to practice, and then here we're going to go. Uh, come on in, guys. to, uh, if you turn uh, there to Hebrews chapter 7. By the way, welcome to King Creek Baptist. Glad to have you joining us this morning and uh, appreciate all the good things that the Lord has done. Let me say this right briefly and right quickly. Uh, God willing, uh, we will, have, next Sunday, uh, we will do both morning and evening services here at the building. And then, then that will put all of the services here. And then uh, the next one we'll, that we'll start adding is Sunday school when we can really figure out how good to social distance it down in the basement. So, uh, and part of it here. But uh, we're thankful for what the Lord has done. Now, Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter number 7 and verse number 19. The Bible said, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And insomuch as not without an oath he was made priest. For these priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By the way, that word repent right there just simply means you change, will not change his mind. So, but so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they were, uh, were many priests because they were not uh, suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, or wherefore, he is able. Thus the title of the little, little tune that we did. He is able. Right here in the King James Bible now, where you'll see this, he is able also to save them unto the uttermost that come uh, unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And uh, let's go to God in prayer. We've got a lot of objects to remember. Pray for us today. We have a funeral this afternoon. And... Uh, uh, Normally, I don't do a lot on Sundays unless they're here, but uh, I've got this funeral 
uh, there. And, and uh, so you be praying uh, for us and the family uh, in this uh, in this funeral. And don't forget our uh, regular things. We've got some here in the church going to uh, doctors. That's going to determine if they have surgery or not. So let's lift them up before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're asking you, dear God, to bless and help us. Thank you for the songs thus far today. We pray that you would ever help us and be with us, dear God. And our Father, we'll thank you from whence come up all of our blessings. Pray that you'd help us preach. God, without, your, without you preaching through us, we'll not be able to do anything. We just pray, God, that you would help us to preach the word and be with those that need help uh, in the medical field and other ways. Dear God, we pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to start uh, I, I want to start a message, and I'm not sure how far we'll go with this. Um, I know last time we thought we'd go two times and ended up doing three, but we'll start with the idea that we might do three or two and see where how far we go. But I'm preaching on this thought, he is able. He is able. Now, this uh, expression is used much, but believed little. Now, you just stop and think, how much the world does the world uh, believe that he is able? He's able to do anything that we can imagine. He's able to do these things. And, and he's able. Now, this, as I said, this expression is used much, but is believed little. Approximately this is used in the Bible approximately uh, 81 times, all from Genesis to, the, to Revelation, 81 times in the King James Bible, uh, hear this little phrase, these three little words, he is able. He is able. Now, we can... <clears throat> Take the he out. He is a pronoun, and it takes the place of a name or a, a noun, and we could put Jesus is able there. Uh, we could put Christ is able uh, in that situation. But the writer chose to use the word he is able. Now, in this verse, verse 25, which is our text verse, I want you, I'm going to read it again, and I want you to uh, see these, some of these things. He, or wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Now, that's a big task. That's a big task. But I want us to, first of all, as we look at this verse, I want us to see that he is able to save. He is able to save. In verse number 25 that I read, it said, Wherefore he is able also to save. Not only just save, but save them to the uttermost. And that word is uh, simply assurance, uttermost there. It's talking about assurance and security. Uh, if your salvation is not good enough to take you to heaven, you don't have anything. So you need to know that we're saved to the uttermost. And if you've accepted Christ, as he said in the word of God, you've got that. 
But I want us to look at some places in the Bible where he is able to save. Where he's able to save. Now, first of all, he is able to save the religious man like Nicodemus over in John chapter number 3. He's able to save that religious man like Nicodemus. You, in our world today, we find a lot of people that are religious. Uh, I know uh, a person who uh, made this comment about a person that they work with and said, uh, he is religious. And uh, so he doesn't work on Sunday and, 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 and all of these type things. And I thought to myself, boy, is he in the wrong business? But I, my, I, I thought, that's a man like me. I uh, uh, don't, uh, I, I, I mean, I literally, if I knew it, if I could, if I could get around it, uh, I, I, do, I would not take a job knowing that I had to work on Sunday. Now, I'm not talking about an emergency. Uh, I'm not talking in the amount of emergency, but I wouldn't take a job. And you say, well, I, you can't live on what you did. Don't tell me I did for many years until the Lord got me uh, put uh, in several places. But this man, Nicodemus, now how many remember the story of Nicodemus? Well, the Bible said over in uh, John 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, here's what this verse has told you. This verse has, number one, told you that he was a Pharisee. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but mostly the Pharisees, were the uh, religious uh, 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 authoritarians, author authority people. In other words, if you needed the Word of God explained, the Pharisees were in charge, and they did it. If you needed an interpretation on some scripture, uh, they were the people who were put in charge and uh, that did these things under the old covenant. But we see them. And, they, and this man's name, so we found out who he was. And his name was Nicodemus. And then he is also, he was a ruler of the Jews. So we found out some things about this man. But he, he was religious. Now, the Bible goes on to say here, the same came to Jesus by night. Now, a lot of, there's a lot of discussion about him coming at night. It could be because he was uh, a Pharisee and he did not want them to see him uh, going to Jesus because you see the Pharisees hated Jesus and they said unto him rabbi which is another word for teacher or in our day we might say doctor or master uh, we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, Nicodemus was not a, what we would say, quote, unquote, a believer. He hadn't got to that point yet. But he has recognized something in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's different than all the others. And that has come. And by the way, John the Baptist 
uh, they they saw John the Baptist and they saw these uh, these different things. But now they see Jesus and they recognize something different about him than all of the other teachers. And Jesus answered and said unto him, now this is to the Nicodemus, this man who, who uh, is the caretaker of the law. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Now this is a question. Remember, now we're studying uh, on Wednesday night and sometimes on Sunday night uh, a little more in detail in some of these things. And we, we have found out that the Jews loved, loved to ask questions. Even today, they love to ask questions. And we learn by questions. Uh, so he's, uh, the, the, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of, uh, well, let me go back up here. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Now, how's he, what's he thinking about? Thinking about the flesh, isn't he? He's not thinking about the spirit. Uh, and can he enter uh, the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Another question. He's not trying to be a smart, a smart mouth, but he's literally concerned, so he's asking questions. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, and that's the word of God, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So we found we've got two things. We've got the word of God. Something has got to convict you. Something has got to tell us that we need the way we're the way we're going is not the right way. But that he is able, that's the emphasis here, he is able to save a religious man like Nicodemus. You may be here, you may be listening to me by Facebook Live or listening over the uh, FM radio system. You may be listening to me and you may think, well, uh, I, I go to church. I was confirmed. I've been brought up in church all my life. I've, I know the, uh, all of the uh, things, the, the right things to say. I know all the things. I had to memorize all of these things. And uh, I, I know this, but yet the Bible says that he's able to save us to the uttermost. That word save simply is we're putting our trust and he's, we're putting all of our hope on the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So he's able to save the religious man. Let's move right on over into another uh, chapter right here. In chapter number four, we find that he's not only able to save a religious man, a man like Nicodemus, who, how you, you say, well, preacher, how do you know Nicodemus got saved? Well, I'll tell you how you know it. All over in a few more chapters when our Lord is going to Calvary and he goes to Calvary and dies on the cross, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, who both were probably Pharisees, and Nicodemus had probably won him to the Lord, and uh, both of them got the body of our Lord and took it and buried it. 
Amen. Uh, you, you learn some things by action uh, mm -hmm. with them. Now, uh, so we find in verse number four, here is a ruined. He's able to save the ruined like the woman here of John chapter number four. Now, boy, this woman is a character, buddy. Uh, she sounds like some of these modernistic folks today. Uh, the Bible tells us there, this, this woman of Samaritan, Samaria, the Samaritan woman. And, uh, of course, uh, what got her attention was our Lord was uh, out in the, uh, standing by the well, and that really got her attention because most Jews would not do that. Therefore, the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself had baptized not, but his disciples. And he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Uh, and he must needs go through Samaria. Now, here we get to the story. And I won't read it all, but I'll give you a little idea. Then cometh he unto the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave unto his son Joseph. And Jacob, Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore, being uh, weary with, the, with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Now, here comes this woman who is a woman of not a stellar reputation. And she came up and to, uh, then came the woman, cometh a, a woman to Samaria to draw water. And Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. And the disciples, for his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Now, to make this a little shorter, we find about this woman, number one, he's getting this woman's attention. He's talking to her. This is a good way to learn how to witness, boy, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And that is, you, you just can't run up in people's face and say, uh, are you saved? Are you lost? Uh, that that right, off the, right off puts them defensive. But if you're sitting out somewhere, you sit, you're out in the grocery store, or you're out uh, in some place, uh, and he, you're seeing, uh, you run into somebody, and there you're talking with them, just begin to talk with them, have a conversation with them. You might ask them, well, where do you work? Or do, are you retired? Or uh, what, what are you doing? And just start strike up a conversation. And then you uh, begin to talk to them. And that's what Jesus did. The first thing he did, this woman said, uh, I don't understand this. Here you are a, a Jew, and uh, I being a woman of Samaria uh, and a Jew, you're, you're asking me to give you water. <laughs> that, that first threw her out. But to, to make this not go too far, but this woman, if you'll read this story, was did not have a very stellar reputation. She was ruined. And uh, if you as you read all this, but you know what I like? Over here in this passage of scripture, uh, we find that uh, after this woman who she just was just full of questions and she began to ask all these things and boy after a while if you just read this chapter you'll find out it clicked <laughs> and she believed and that's what she said I, she believed I believe and this woman put down her water pot 
left it. That's the only worldly thing she had with her. So that was it. And she left it. And she went. And boy, I'll tell you, in verse number 30, uh, verse number 39, this is a, a, a good explanation of this woman. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. Amen. <laughs> He's able, right? Yeah. Thank God we serve a God that's able. Amen. This world, this listen to me. This you can't expect this world to act right. I mean, they're not going to act right because they don't know him. But he's able to solve our problems. He's able to do all these things. I, I'm not saying that I totally don't do this. I mean, look, folks, uh, I'm human just like you. And I worry about things. I, I worry about all these things uh, a lot of times, and I probably shouldn't. But I'll tell you, he's able. Amen. He's able. He's able to take care of them. Now, I want you to look at, not only is he able to save the religious like Nicodemus. You may have been brought up in church all your life. You may be in the church every, uh, every time, every, everything you've done, you may be in church. And your daddy or your mother, your parents may have brought you to church, your grandparents. And I, look here, I can name you people after, after people that live right in this community that I've known since I've been here for 37 years. And their grandparents brought them. And their mothers and dads brought them a little. But they're basically, a lot of times their grandparents brought them. Every time these doors were open when they were little, they they come. I, I thought about uh, uh, I better not call names, but I thought about one of our deacons who used to sit in the back toward the back there, and he done a lot of cooking. And and he got he went around and got a station wagon full of little old boys and girls, and brought them here to church. And they stayed here till they got about 18. Or maybe a little, about 16. Because when they got their driver's license, they didn't need him anymore. And so they was able to go. But anyway, what I'm getting to, all of these little old children, religious people sometimes, ruined people, he's able to save. He's able to save. I want to give you one more. He's able to save not only the religious man. He's not only able to save the, ru the ruined life. In this case, it happened to be a woman. could be a man. Ruined life. But I want you to know in, in Luke chapter number 15, you know who we find there? We find the, another one, a rebellious person. In Luke 15, we find the rebellious son in, in that passage of Scripture. In Luke 15, we see this young man here, and the Bible begins to tell about it. In this chapter, he's named, known as the lost son. And a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, uh, you look that word riotous up when you get an opportunity. But rebellious living a rebellious son. What I'm saying, you look, you look, you look around. I mean, people that used to come, that people used to come. I mean, now they've grown. They've got children of their own, big and grown, but they don't come to church. Their grandparents brought them. Their grandparents.
grandparents saw that they were here until they got up to a certain age, maybe even their parents. And when they got a certain age, they, they did, didn't think religious or didn't think salvation or the service of God was that important. So they're out doing things of the world. A rebellious son, but I'm going to tell you, he's able to save that rebellious son, that rebellious person. I'm glad he is. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad he's able, and he is able. And you may be here this morning, and you may be saying, boy, just wait. I, I can't wait till I can get to where I can get out on my own, and I'm going to hit the road, and I'm going to start doing all these things. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. But I'm going to tell you something. You just remember one thing. There's a payday. There's a payday. <laughs> I, I won't go too far into this, but my wife gave me one of the one of the best compliments that I believe I've ever heard her say. Told, talking about a certain person in our community who got saved. And <laughs> She told me, she said, you know, you, you know, you, that man, every time you saw him walking down the road, you'd pick him up in your truck. And you, from there to wherever he was going to Ebenezer or wherever he's going, you were talking to him, trying to witness to him, trying to get him saved. And you, for years, ever since I've been preaching, and for years, I, 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 I did, in fact, I didn't even realize this. But in fact, I got to where he wouldn't even ride with me. I'd go by and it'd be, it'd be raining and I'd pull, I'd pull up by him and his, his vehicle would be broke down. I'd pull up by him and say, let's go. I'll take you to get the gas. And we'll do that. He'd, no, I'm almost there. I'm not going. I'll just go on. I'm already wet. I'm going. And so I'd go, but he got to where he wouldn't even ride with me. But when he got saved, Listen, he got saved. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> now, I wasn't the one led him to the Lord. He got saved somewhere. But you know what happened? He run me down <clears throat> in the mall. I was out in the Blue Ridge Mall walking, and he run me down and told me, he said, Look, hey, I got saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. A rebellious son, a ruined person, and a religious person, he's able to save. Amen. He knows your case, buddy. He's able to save. Now, let me give you one more point, and we'll agree. Not only is he able to save, but he's able to sustain. You know what that word sustain means? So he's able to keep you. See, there's a lot of people believe you can lose your salvation. And I'm not, uh, you say, yeah, I'm listening to you. I'm going to cut you off. And that's fine. Uh, if you want to live in that defeated mess, you go ahead. But I'm going to tell you something. He's able to keep you. Amen. He's able to keep you. Uh, in our text verse over there, he, he talks about it being to the uttermost. He's able to save. Now, he's able to keep you quickly. Over in the book of Jude. In Jude, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude, but in Jude, and that's almost at the end of the, the, the Bible. Second book to the end. In verse number, boy, I like this. <laughs> Here's that word again. And now, unto him that is able. Amen. I got that circle in my Bible. <laughs> that is able to keep you from falling and to present you what? Faultless. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He's able to keep you. He's able Amen. to sustain you. He's able to keep you from falling, he said. Now, there's none of us perfect. 
ladies and gentlemen. Even though that we're saved and born again, we're not perfect. But he's able to keep you from falling. You know what you, you and I have? We face temptation every day as a believer. And he's, he told us that with every temptation, he would make a way of escape. Didn't he? Amen. Now, there's always that way. Now, you say, well, preacher, I've gotten in more trouble, but I'll tell you what you didn't do. And I'll tell you what I didn't do. I have to. But I'll tell you what we didn't do. We didn't take that way of escape when it was offered. With every temptation and with every problem, every temptation, he'll give you a way out if you're saved. If you're saved. Now, you may not take it, you may not see it, but he'll give you a way of escape. So, we find that he's able to keep us from falling. Boy, that's a blessing, isn't it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Able to keep us from falling. I, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of trouble with me. <laughs> I, I, I do. But I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, I'll tell you this little thing happened to us yesterday. Uh, if in, in case anybody wants to know, my tractor's been broke down. <laughs> Since back in the wintertime, I, keep, I get the thing started and it acts like it's going to go. And then it won't. And I've had everybody, had one of the most high-tech uh, mechanics in the country come up and check it the other day. And it's blowed his mind. Now, what I want you to know is this. You know what? He's able to keep us from falling. Mm -hmm. He's able to keep us from falling. Amen. But what I was telling you, I went down, I thought, Lord, I've got to mow this field somehow. And God gave me this idea, so I went down there and I mowed that thing. With a, with a lawnmower. I mean, hay to here. <laughs> and I mowed it with a lawnmower. And come back. And I thought all that time, and I, down in that, uh, I'd be in trouble. You know where I got in trouble? I come back in the yard. In the yard. <laughs> in the yard. And I got, got that lawnmower so messed up and so in a ditch. And so stuck in the flat yard <laughs> that I, had, I was going to have a bright idea to push it out with my old truck. <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> but I thought we finally got it out. But anyway, he's able to keep you from falling. Mm -hmm. Number two, he's able, to, he's able to sustain you to keep you from falling and to keep you from failing. There's a difference there. Failing. Failing. Look over in Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. And I'm hurrying on here. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse number uh, and verse number 13. In Philippians 4, 13. I'll tell you, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. I can do all things. I'll tell you, sometimes I wonder how I've been able to do any of these things. I just cannot see it. But I'll tell you, you know why? Because I'm not doing them. He's doing them. That's right. He's Amen. doing them. Amen. Now, the last one. Not only is he able to save and he's able to sustain and keep us from falling and failing, but he's able to keep us from fainting. Fainting. Over in Luke chapter number 18, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 18, and verse number 1. I want, I want you to look there. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> there we are. Well, it won't turn. 18 and verse number 1. And he spake a parable 
unto them to this end, that men always ought that men ought always to pray and not to faint. How do you keep from fainting? Right, just the opposite. Pray. Pray. Amen. You and me, ladies and gentlemen, need to spend time in prayer. And he is able. He is able to take care of us, to keep us. He's able to save us to the uttermost. And he's able to sustain us all the way through to keep us from falling, from failing, and from fainting. What, do you, what is fainting? That's just giving. That's just literally wearing yourself out doing things either for the Lord or anything even doing that but if you a lot of people are just fighting this battle and they never take time to pray they're trying to carry this load by themselves and not pray you I, I'll tell you one of the greatest things that you and I have ever done is when we learn to pray and put our faith and our trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen folks, listen to me. He's able. He's able to keep you. He's able to keep me. And he's able to take care of us right here. And uh, uh, you know what? We're living in, let, let me just tell you this and, we're, and let me finish. I've got two minutes. Listen, folks. We've read our Bibles and we've been from Revela Genesis to Revelation more than one time. And we've read our Bibles. We're living in the days that we've been reading about in the Bible. That's right. We're living. But you know what? He's able to sustain us. Amen. He's able to sustain us in these days and this hour. But one of the ways we know it that keeps us from fainting is by prayer. Amen. Prayer. Serving Him, seeking Him in prayer. May God richly bless us. Bless us. Listen, folks. If you need to make some type of uh, thing for the Lord, you, you just... Uh, Make that pew right in front of you an altar and you just ask the Lord to save you. Come into your heart and you believe that with all of your heart. Our Father, we thank you, dear God, for this day. Bless and help if you're dealing with lies in here this morning. I pray, God, that you'd be with them. In thy wonderful name that we pray. Amen and amen. All right, may God bless you. Don't forget to tune in tonight uh, to Facebook uh, Live at uh, six o'clock we'll, we'll do the broadcast and then starting uh, next week if it's God's will now something don't happen and this stuff don't get worse or whatever we'll start back here and doing our regular things right here in the church may God richly bless you